guys, Patton here. Welcome back to the channel. So today I finally have a working version of the new expandable storage modification for the SNES Classic that I'm going to share with all of you how to get this done step by step. We got this today, finally. So if you look down here, you will see these programs right here, HackChi 2.21e. These are all the programs you're gonna need to get this to work. Maybe not Notepad++, but I'm going to include it anyway just in case just in case you need it. And I'll explain later why. So, Hackshe 2.21e, that is the version I use. F also works, but I don't use F because of there's a couple bugs that haven't been ironed out. So I use E. That's the most stable version that I use now. The Hackshe GUI Windows 32 official. Hackshe 2.21e Dan the Man 827 version. All these I will provide for you in the description with a download link so you will have everything you need from this video period except for the ROMs I cannot provide those for you you will have to look for them EMU Paradise or you know Google search for PS1 game Sega CD game I can't give those to you you have to do your searches on your own so let's get started for hardware you will need besides the SNES classic a flash drive this one is 16 gigabytes which is plenty and one of these this is a micro to USB converter micro micro yeah so I'll provide a link I got this off Amazon it has as you can see here three USB ports one female micro USB port and one male micro USB port I would suggest getting one of these with the three ports because eventually, not yet, right now it's just used for added storage, but you can use these USB ports for a keyboard, a mouse, or an extra controller port. Now on DOSBox or Commodore 64, the keyboard and mice are working. In this tutorial, we're only going to be focusing on using one of these ports for the storage. Once everything else gets ironed out, I'll do another video on how to use your keyboard mice extra controllers if that's a possibility all that using one of these it's called an OTG uh, micro USB USB something charger now this one has a switch between charge and OTG make sure this switch is always on the OTG setting never on charge it won't work it has to be on OTG specifically so we have our hardware we have our list of software down here. First things first, you're gonna to wanna to uninstall everything from your SNES Classic Start Fresh. So we're gonna show you how to do that. You're gonna click on Kernel, Uninstall. Do you really wanna remove everything? Yes, we do. We're gonna start completely fresh. So here's our box telling us to hold the reset button down on our SNES Classic as we push power. And we let go. So this doesn't take long at all to flash everything. I think another box is gonna come up asking us to dump the original kernel. And if that's the case, then we will do that. So this will just take one second. Okay, done. Wait until the LED goes out. You also need to flash the original kernel. Do you wanna flash it now? Yes. So now we're going to turn off the SNES Classic. Wait a second. Once again, hold reset, push power. We're gonna upload our original dump kernel so this will take another second we're gonna wait until that finishes and there we go don't forget to perform a factory reset if you want to delete all suspend points we're not worried about that so now we have a fresh stock clean SNES classic attached to our PC here is our Hexi 2 version 2.21e the only thing we are going to use this for is for installing modules and saving any hackshe settings like the controller reset that's all we're doing so the first thing we're gonna go to we're gonna do is go to settings controller hacks use button combination to reset and then select reset button combination so when this little screen pops up you're gonna select whatever your button combination is I have an LR and down we're gonna go back to settings save settings 
to NES or SNES Mini now. You need to flash the custom kernel to your NES SNES Mini. This only required once. Do you want to continue? Yes, we do. Back to the reset power. Let's do it. Reset. Power. Okay. Now all this is doing is saving those settings for my controller hack. That's it. That's all we use that for. So when this is done, we'll move on to the next step. Okay, there we go. We are done. So now we have our controller hacks installed on our SNES Classic. Next thing we need to do is install the modules that you want. Now basically, if you're going to stick with this storage device, the only thing you're going to have on your SNES Classic console itself are these modules. So let's go to our modules tab. Install extra modules. Um, to populate these modules on your list, you just take them from whatever folder you download them to and you drag them into the square and it'll populate on the list. Otherwise, if that doesn't work in your hack chief folder, you'll have a user underscore mods folder. Drag them into that folder and that should also cause them to populate on the list. And again, in my description, I'll put a download link for KMDF Manix. Um, module releases that he does. I think his newest one is 1124 of this year. So just like yesterday. So I'll include that with the downloads. So once you have them in this box here, you're going to check whatever box you want. So DOS box. This is for DOS games. We, we went FB Alpha 2012 for arcade, FB Alpha 2016 for arcade, Lupin 64 for N64. Let's see, we'll take MAME 2000, MAME 2003. We're not going to do 10 and 14 because they're too big. They won't let us install all these mods at once. You have to keep it under a certain um, certain amount of space. MGBA for Game Boy Advance. PCSX Rearmed Neon is for PS1 games. Pico Drive. If you like Sega, this is the one for you. 32X Game Gear Mega Drive. Sega CD, Sega Master System, all in one core. So that's pretty cool. Gotta have RetroArch. We'll do SNES 9X for those hard to play games. And Tiny 7 ZX Dynamic. This is going to allow this USB mod to be able to read 7-zip games. That only counts for cartridge games like Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Genesis. Games like that, not CD based games, and I'll get into that. This is where a lot of people were having problems because they were keeping those seven zips and they weren't running, and nobody said anything. So don't do that. Mega Drive, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, and in this N64. Those should be able to read using this mod. So you're going to click OK. Here we are again. Hold power, excuse me, hold reset while pushing power. Should only take a second. Lights off, here we go. Resetting with power. Okay, so it's gonna build a custom kernel edge. I will see you when this is done. Okay, here we are. Sorry, I was watching some Zelda Link to the Past randomizer. Okay, we are all done. So now on our Super Nintendo Mini, SNES Classic, whatever you wanna call it, we have our mods installed. We also have our controller hack installed. Say goodbye to Hackchi version 2.21e. We're no longer using that. Now, next step is going to be using the Hackchi GUI Windows 32 official. Make sure you do these steps in the same order I'm doing them or this may not work. Also, use the files I'm providing for you in the description or else this may not work for you. I can only tell you what's working for me right now with what I have, so I really suggest using what I have. So first thing you want to do, let's move this over here. In the dump folder, it's going to be empty and this is for Hackchi GUI Windows 32. Copy your kernel, your original kernel, into this folder. That's going to let us do everything. Make sure you turn your Super Nintendo off after installing those mods too. So we have a Super Nintendo that's turned off. We have our kernel in our dump folder. Let's click on Hackchi GUI EXE, and we're going to move it over here. We're going to drag it down. Okay, so this says knock knock. Hold down the reset button. 
you see a pattern here. Turn on the power to the SNES Classic. Okay, so now it's on. So in this order, here's what you're gonna do. Dump kernel image. Only takes a couple seconds. Okay, there we go. So we dumped our kernel image. Next, unpack kernel image. This one's really quick. There we go, all done. So next we're gonna flash kernel and I'll put all these instructions here for you again. Flash kernel, sure, yes we are. This one takes the longest out of all these steps. Okay, flash kernel done. Next we're going to rebuild kernel image. This one doesn't take that long either. There you go. Last thing we're gonna do with this hack cheat is mem boot. Okay. Say goodbye to Hackchi GUI. We're all done with that. So, uh, the last step that we have, we're going to close our Hackchi GUI Windows 32 folder. The last step um, is only if you want to use folders. If you don't want to use folders, let me show you what to do real quick. All right, you go back into your, your regular Hackchi that you normally use, mine's 2.21e. Um, and say this RetroArch is a game, okay? When you add that to your HackG, it's going to create a folder. That folder is going to be in the game's SNES. Right here. This should be RetroArch. Yes, it is. So what you'll do if you don't want folders, which is only going to limit you to 60 games on your SNES Classic. So if you're okay with only having 60 games and you don't want folders, then go ahead and do it this way. All you do is copy this folder over. So let's hook up our flash drive so I can show you how that's gonna work. Okay, so here's our USB drive on drive E. If you don't want folders, here's what you do. In this, on this drive, you're gonna create a HackChi folder. Make sure it is spelled correctly. Inside that HackChi folder, you're gonna create another folder labeled games. In that games folder, you're just gonna drag that folder over and then it will be on your USB stick ready to play with your SNES Classic and you can do that with all your games from your SNES Classic from your from your old hack G, as long as you drag that folder over but we're not going to do it that way we are going to keep the hack G and games folder on our USB drive we'll keep that right there we don't need this so last thing we're going to do is use this hack G 2.21e Dan the Man 827 version He's actually the one that got the folder accessibility on this new USB hack. So we're going to open up that folder, hackchi, exe. It's a debug version, so you're going to get this little command prompt looking thing. You're going to add more games, and I've already got a bunch of pre-selected games. Downloads, here we go. In this folder right here that we're going to install. But say you download a Sega CD game or a PS1 game it's gonna look like this so we got Snatcher for the Sega CD so we're gonna extract here okay make sure all files is checked in this box down here normally it's games and apps so if you extract it and your game doesn't show up it's because you have to click all files down here so here we have our Snatcher zip get rid of that we don't need our original zip file because it's not spelled correctly then you're gonna have a bin and a queue file you're gonna have this the same way with PS1 games. We don't need this Q file, so get rid of that. Now we just have our regular Snatcher game, but it's got all this extra stuff we don't need on it that will cause the game not to run. So get rid of all of it. Snatcher.bin. That is what you need. Just as plain Snatcher.bin. We're going to put that in the rest of our folder games here. So, here's what we have. We have Blood Omen Legacy of Cain for PS1, Chrono Cross PS1, Diablo PS1, Silent Hill PS1, Snatcher Sega CD, Popful Mail Sega CD, Gunstar Heroes for Genesis, Vector Man Genesis, Zombies Ate My Neighbors for Genesis, Super Nintendo, we have Metal Warriors, Soul Blazer, Super Mario RPG, and Terra Enigma. You'll notice that the Super Nintendo games are 7-zipped. You can do the same thing with your Genesis games or with your Nintendo, Game Boy. Those games will work 7-zipped. So we're going to add all these games to our SNES Classic. Let's see how big they are. Properties of all these files. 3.59 gigabytes. 
I don't think that'll fit on an SNES Classic as it is now, but that's okay. So we're going to add these. This is going to take a long time because you are adding a lot of stuff into this. This will take several minutes. And because I'm doing this live, well, you know, live as in right now, it's going to take a while. So I will be back when all this is done. I'm going to watch some Zelda randomizer. Okay, so that's finally done. Now, the next thing you want to do after you've added your games here. Here we have some Genesis, Genesis Super Nintendo. All right, so for our disc-based games, our Sega CD, our PS1, see how they all have this compress box checked. We're going to have to uncheck that for every single disc-based game that we have because that's going to change it into a 7-zip and the core or the Super Nintendo, either way you want to you know, call it, won't recognize it if it's a zip file. It has to be that bin file. So for each one of these, we have to uncheck the box. Now, when you uncheck the box, it might, there we go. The uh, hack you will say not responding, but that's okay. Just give it time because it takes a while for it to uncompress these files. So once I have all of these uncompressed, I'll be right back. Okay, so let's check everything should be decompressed. Silent Hill Snatcher. Okay, everything has been decompressed. Now you'll see here, Zombies Ate My Neighbors, a Mega Drive game, Vector Man, Mega Drive game. The command line has already changed for us, so we don't have to do anything special with that. What we do have to do is check the end of the command line here make sure that it doesn't have any of those special characters the parentheses or anything like that so everything should be fine because we took care of that already and I'll show you what to do if you forgot to do that to begin with and you've already made it here and you're like oh man I don't want to add these games all over again so Terranigma because Terranigma is a special game that won't run with the regular SNES core um, when you go to add it it'll say hey there's a fix for this game do you want to do it and then it'll say, hey, this game doesn't run for the regular core. Do you want to use it on a third-party um, uh, core, which is the SNES 9X core? So that already changes the command line right here for us, the slash bin slash SNES, which is great. So, Vector Man, and same thing with the Mega Drive. You have the slash bin slash MD. And for games that will run on the Super Nintendo core, like Super Mario RPG, you have this Clover Canoe blah 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 thing. So all of this is normal. Soul Blazer, same thing. Snatcher, okay. So again, once you get into your disc games, you're going to have to change the command line for them. So here you see slash bin slash bin. That's because the disc image is a dot bin image, not dot zip like the arcade games or dot SF ROM like Super Nintendo. It's going to be whatever that file type is. So it's a bin file type, so that's why it shows up that way. So you're going to take out the bin. The command line for PS1 games is going to be PCSX. That will make it so that Core will run this game when we go to start it on the Super Nintendo. So I have to do that for all the Super Nintendo games. For the Sega CD games, like Popful Mail, again we have the bin, take that out. It's SCD for Sega CD. No problem. So we're going to do that for all the games and I'll be right back. Okay, so those are all changed how we want them. Uh, the next thing you want to do, uh, also take a look at our um, our space use here, 3,680 megabytes. That is closer to what we were looking at before, to 3.6 gigs when we were adding all these games. So now that everything's been decompressed, we're looking at 3.6 gigs, which in no way will fit on the Super Nintendo Classic. So this is your proof here that this works. So we have our games. We have the command line changed. Um, you want to make sure that when we're doing the folders you go to settings pages folder structure you have to make sure this custom is is checked over here custom show folders manager every time or else nothing's gonna happen they'll just show up on the main screen and you won't have anything to do with anything so before we do that say you forgot to change the um, the title of the games before you added them and you're like oh no I don't want to add them again no problem. You're going to find your Hackchi folder with your games in them, Game SNES. So here's our folders. This is where the Notepad++ comes in. 
So this is Zombies Ate My Neighbors. Say this was named incorrectly. Okay, then we renamed it. Now just because you rename it doesn't mean that the Super Nintendo is going to understand where to pull that core from. You have to change it on the desktop file now. So once you have that notebook plus plus installed, you double click on the desktop. And this is where a lot of the confusion was when this first came out. People didn't know to do all this. So when you open up with notebook plus plus, this is the confusing part. So you see this exe c equals blah 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 blah. This is basically your command line. This is what you're going to have to change now because it won't be saved from your hack gene. I know it sounds confusing, but to make sure that everything's working, you can click on this desktop file to make sure this works. So we have a Sega Genesis game here. So we have the MD, and we have no special characters here, no parentheses or exclamation points or anything like that. So this all looks good. This has to match this. Minus the seven zip. We don't care about the seven zip part, but as long as the zombies underscore eight underscore my underscore neighbors dot gen matches this, then you're fine. If you need to change it, then you just change it. Take out the MD if that's a zip or something like that. Hit save and it'll save it and it should work fine. Let's check another game real quick. Gunstar Heroes, once again. Gunstar underscores heroes dot gen MD very good check one more let's see vector man's genesis let's find something else soul blazer okay I know this will be Silent Hill yeah so we have our Silent Hill bin right here unzipped everything just how you want it this is how you want your PS1 games double click that desktop file see here how it says bin slash bin that's not going to work. We have to go in here and change that to PCSX like we did before and now save it. So we may have to do that on all our games because again, the disc based games, they're so complicated with this. And that could just be because we haven't synchronized them yet. So we're going to try and synchronize them first to see if everything we put in the command line here goes through it should save once you hit synchronize everything you put in the command line should save to that desktop file so we're going to do that first so we have our folder structure okay so now this is what you do different you hold down the shift key on your keyboard as you hit synchronize that's going to bring up your browse for folder box this is what we're going to use for our usb drive Instead of putting it directly to the Super Nintendo, it's going to allow you to pick where these games are going. So here's our USB drive on the E drive, our hack sheet, games. You're going to make sure games is highlighted. You're going to click OK. New games removed to the unsorted folder. That's fine because it's the first time we're doing this, technically. So I made these folders already, and if you don't know how to make the folders, I have a tutorial video on that. So check my tutorial playlist. You'll see how to make folders. It's super easy. So I've already made a PS1, 32X, and Sega CD. We're going to use, let's see, unsorted. Instead of 32X, we're going to make this Genesis. Since we no longer have 32X games that I'm testing. So Gunstar, Vector Man, Zombies, into the Genesis. Snatcher is going to go in Sega CD. And we don't have, let's rename this to SNES. And then we just have Super Nintendo games in there. Super Nintendo Genesis, PS1, Sega CD. So I wonder if we can change if my box art went here or not. It did. There it is. Wonderful. So now that should pop up on our Super Nintendo. Sega CD. Let's see, I don't think I put anything in here for Sega CD. No, we'll keep that as a Game Gear, just for testing. Who cares? And then SNES. We should have a SNES folder somewhere. There we go. Okay, so these should show up on our Super Nintendo Classic. So once you have your folders looking how they want, you have your games where you want them, you're going to click OK. So real quick, two Sega CD games, four PS1 games, 
three Genesis, four Super Nintendo. This is going to take a while, so I'm going to come back when all this is done. Okay, that's finally all done. So this is what your USB drive or your flash drive is going to look like after you're done. Under Hackchi Games, you're going to have this folder system, but that's only because we made four basic folders with games in them. So we can close that. And done here. So if everything went correctly, the USB drive, flash drive, is ready and the Super Nintendo is ready. So one more thing before we head over to the Super Nintendo is how you're going to hook this up. So the micro USB that you would normally hook into the back of the Super Nintendo is going to go into the female end of your OTG uh, adapter. So it's going to go in this port here. On mine it's a little lightning bolt looking symbol as opposed to the USB symbol. So it's going to go into the lightning bolt symbol then the male end is going to go into the Super Nintendo. So basically it's just going to go in here through there to the Super Nintendo. And then your flash drive is going to go in one of these three USB spots. So that's it. I mean, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll check it out and see how all these games, uh, if they're going to work or not in the folders. So I'll see you over there. So here we are on our SNES Classic with our custom... USB mod for extra storage. We have our SNES folder, Genesis, PS1, and Sega CD. So let's do some stuff we already know. We're going to go into the SNES folder. Uh, we're going to try out Super Mario RPG. This should start no problem. This is a native game to the Super Nintendo Classic, and it looks like it's starting up no problem. We have the border working. Awesome. We kind of figured this was going to work. This would work normally on any SNES Classic. So, all right, looking good. Let's check if our reset combination on our controller works. And it does. Perfect. How about Metal Warriors? That worked before. Maybe it'll work again. Or just kidding. Okay, there we go. Konami. We're working. What a good game. I remember saying this last time, but this is a really good game. You all should play this, find it, put it on your SNES Classic, and play it. It's a good game. Okay, resetting. So let's see, what do we have left? Soul Blazer, that's new. Enix, Dragon Warrior. No, Soul Blazer, which is also a really good game. You should play this too. I've played and beaten it. It is a fun action RPG game with good music, as you can tell. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay, so Soul Blazer works. How about Terranigma? This is a problem child game, but it starts up no problem. Enix, again. Actually, I think. What is it? Um, no. Soul Blazer, then Illusion of Gaia, then Terra Enigma are kind of all the same series. So let's actually get into this game. Maybe. I don't know the buttons. I've never played this game. I heard it was really good. I should play it. Maybe I'll LP it. Maybe we'll do a Patent Plays Terra Enigma. The Outsets. Chapter 1. I'm getting some stereo effect in my headphones here. Again, the outs... Okay, I was afraid it was like frozen. Because I don't know this game. Alright, we're sleeping. We're always sleeping at the beginning of RPGs. So... I'm going to say this is working. I don't know if it freezes before there. But it works. Super Nintendo games using a USB flash drive. Bam. But that's not that impressive. We're going to look at the Genesis. Now, watch this. This is my fault. That. Gunstar doesn't work because I picked the wrong ROM. That's my fault. No fault of the SNES Classic or the flash drive. So let's make it up with some Vector Man. Yeah. There he is. And did you know you can shoot the Sega logo? Like this? 
A lot? I think this does something. It's like a secret. Maybe. Maybe I'm wrong. I could be wrong. I thought if you shot that so many times and you got a secret, I don't know. Again, this isn't a game I've played, but on the display in like a Target when it first came out, however long that was, apparently 1995, when I was a wee boy, well, teenager. Earth, 2049, and we have Vector Man and Terraport. Can't he like glide or something? Oh, he can double jump. Double jump and shoot. Oh, hello, sir. So there's Vector Man on the SNES Classic USB style. We're gonna get out of here. What else did we have? Zombies Ate My Neighbors. Great co-op game. I would co-op this with so many people. Oh, Zombies Ate My Neighbors. We'll be the kid with the uh, 3D glasses. I've never played this on the Genesis. I did play it on the uh, Super Nintendo. So we are left player. Rescue the neighbors in. Level 1 zombie panic. Okay, so. Again. Nothing impressive. We've seen Genesis before. Whatever. Come on, Patton. This isn't what we came to see. Actually, you probably came here for the tutorial part, so I don't even know why you're still watching. But Sega CD! Pop full mail! Is it gonna work? Oh. Oh! Sega CD. Do you even know how big this game is? It's like 400 megs. This game alone shouldn't fit on the SNES Classic. But look, we're playing it on the SNES Classic. You s s spray that. Glitter Sonic. Glitter Sonic Sega. Okay. Working Designs presents something. Probably Popful Mail. I mean, we clicked on it. Or Yes! Popful Mail. I've played this a little bit. Not on Sega CD. I think I played it on Emulator a long time ago. Here's the intro. It is... Yeah. Anime! Anime girl! Sounds good! Cookie face. Serious. Spoilers, I think she takes all their heads off. I'm not sure. It's been a while since I've played it. Anyway, this seems to be running well. We're going to go to Elf Woods. We are male, I think. The A button does that. B jumps and Y slashes. Also, makes your shield appear when you push down. Where are we? Welcome to Elf Woods. Okay, I just want to get to a certain part. That's kind of cool. This is a neat little side scroll. It's hard. This is a hard game. You collect lots of money. That's not what makes it hard, though. It's just a hard game. The bosses, man. Oh, they're not fun. Oh, and you're not fun. Tanuki thing? I think that's what they're called. I want to get to this part right here. You got some... In-game voice. Dialogue. Look at that. You dunderhead. Wonderful. Pop full mail works great. How about Snatcher? This was a game people wanted to see. I'm going to push the start button to get past this uh, splash screen. Sparkle Sonic's back! Snatcher, a trademark of Konami. 
And there it is. Never played this game, ever. Didn't even start it. Oh, that's abusive to the ears. Is that normal? You're gonna have to tell me if that's normal. That didn't sound normal. Maybe it is. Oh, is that supposed to be music? That doesn't sound good. I don't think it's supposed to sound like that. So maybe Snatcher is a kind of works game. Konami Omni building. Junker. Headquarters. Konami Omni. Act one. We're here to snatch. What are we snatching? I don't know. I don't know this game. <laughs> this looks anime again. Welcome to Junker Headquarters. Can I help you? <sighs> Investigates? Operator poster? What is that poster? Okay. Oh. Gillian says, looks like a government ad. They must be really short on people. Look. I want to look at the operator. She's a beautiful oriental woman. Hey, they haven't used that word in a long time. What year did this come out? Okay, front pod, camera, camera. Looks like they're monitoring the offices. This seems to run good, except for whatever that was. Oh, that's Mika. Only authorized personnel are allowed beyond this point. Well, you know what, Mika? We're just going to head back to the menu then, since you don't want to let us in. Sega CD! Runs very well. So what are we left with? PS1. One of my personal favorites. I love PS1, man. I'm trying to think. I've beaten three out of these four games. I've never played Diablo. Like, period. So let's boot that up, see if it runs. PS1. These games are like 600 megabytes. They shouldn't fit on the SNES Classic, but look! We're playing Diablo on the SNES Classic. And that's Diablo. He looks mean, man. I don't want to fight him. Full motion video. Better than the Sega CD, <clears throat> says the Nintendo fanboy. Not really. Kind of. One player. Warrior, rogue, sorcerer, or load character. How about warrior? Will be, ah. Normal. Loading. Now, I do know that dungeons are randomized or something in this game. I did get the uh, Diablo treasure box a long time ago. Oh, are we playing? All right, we are. See, I like these kind of games. I don't have a spell ready. Oh, he doesn't have a spell ready. Well, excuse me. I'm so sorry. What did I just do? I think I used a potion. I did. I used two of my potions. We just ruined the game. Oh, look at that reflection. That's nice. I may have to play this. I don't know where I'm going. Do I have a map? Pause. Oh, also remember, for PS1 games, you only have one L and R button. So if you have a game where you need L2 or R2, then you're going to have to do some fancy stuff. In the RetroArch menu, settings, input, input user 1 binds, and then you're going to have to change your stuff somehow so that things work. Continue. Or continue. Or pause. There we go. So Diablo, reflection graphics, there you go, very nice. So Diablo, PS1, that shouldn't run on the SNES Classic, but it is from the flash drive. We're going to go back to the menu. Diablo, Silent Hill, Chrono Cross, how about Chrono Cross Disc 1? I didn't put Disc 2 on here for no reason. Can you play Chrono Cross on the PS1? Probably, if this loads. Square Electronic Arts LLC. Wait for it. Square Sun. One of my favorite game companies. Producers, whatever you want to call them. One of my favorites. I'm going to skip this. Oh boy. Pushing that start button. New game or continue? Well, vibration function, we're going to turn that off since we don't have vibration function with the SNES controller. Hey, Surge. What's going on? Confirm. FMB. 
FMV, full motion, yeah, FMV on the SNES Classic. Did you ever think you could play Chrono Cross on the SNES Classic? Well, you couldn't until now. Now you have USB storage to put these games on to play this stuff on the SNES Classic. Absolutely incredible. Look at this. This is running on an SNES Classic. Well, we're going to back out to the menu because we have a couple more games. So we saw Diablo, which I thought was crazy impressive. Chrono Cross, which is also crazy impressive. Blood Omen, one of my favorite all-time game series ever. Probably right behind the Silent Hill series. Maybe. Probably my most favorite non- survival horror game series because you can't beat the dialogue in this game period i don't care who you are or your opinion you can't beat the dialogue in these games we're gonna start the game there is a magic listen to this You can't beat the voice acting in this game. Graphics, maybe, but you have to remember this was way back in the day. This was like 96, 97. But for 96, 97 on a home console, this was like, whoa. Oh, we got some blood. That's Vorador. He doesn't like people because he's a vampire. He looks at people like food. The tavern's closing. Best be on your way, stranger. What? mug of ale for a weary traveler from distant Corhagen? I can reward you well, for I am of noble blood. I stay open for no man in these dark times. Things come with the night that no sane man would welcome. And so I left. Cold of heart and soul. Forced to the road and a long, bitter night. Have you heard anything as good as that in any game? And that was just dialogue between a bartender and some dude in a white suit with a sword incredible you cannot beat this game I mean you can physically beat it but you know in terms of spoken dialogue and ooh, we got a guy hold on yeah there we go you can't you can't oh man you know that always happens though so okay Okay, we, we've seen some some PS1 2D games. Let's check out PS1 with some polygons. Silent Hill has polygons. 3D graphics. Konami. Let's see how Silent Run is. Only one of the greatest game series ever. Well, you know, the first few. The last few could have been better, but, you know. Harry! Harry walking in slow motion. That's actually normal. It's supposed to go that slow. We're looking for our daughter Cheryl. See? Told you. Where could you be? It's, it's so quiet. It's like a ghost town. Because it is a ghost town. Cheryl. My daughter. Let's go find our daughter. Ooh. Cinematic footsteps. Look how good this runs. Who's that? Cheryl, what are you doing over there? Come back to your father. I have your sketch. Cheryl? Is that Cheryl? It is Cheryl. Wait. No, Cheryl. Where are you going? Oh, ha. Uh, anyway, yeah. That's what he says. Hey, wait. Stop. Also that. Come here, Cheryl. I'm going to get you. Never mind. You're gone in the fog. If you've never played this game, I don't know where you've been. But now that you have an SNES Classic, and I just showed you how to use the USB module thing, flash drive, you owe it to yourself to play this game. 
make sure you map one of the shoulder buttons to L2 and R2 because you need those. You don't need L1 and R1 because they just make you strafe and who cares. But I want to say R2 arms your weapon and you need that. What is this? Yeah, see? I know this game too well. S ready for cinematic? Get ready. Ooh, cinematic. Camera angles. What's happening in this game? Where's our daughter? Why are the cameras crazy? Why is it so dark all of a sudden? You're going to have to find that out on your own by putting Silent Hill on a flash drive and playing it on your SNES Classic. Classic? That too! So, there you go. Look, it is working. We have folder function, which is the main thing I wanted because who only wants 60 games on your main menu? That's not... There's way more than 60 games I want to play on this thing. So, thank you for sticking with me on this. Thank you for being patient as I try to get this working. We finally got it down. Hopefully, I don't think I left anything out. If you follow the directions as I've, I've listed them for you, you should have no problem getting this to work. Just do it step by step. If for some reason something doesn't work right away, check the command line or that desktop file like I showed you. That is usually 90% the problem. So I hope this was very helpful to you all, and um, I hope you enjoy putting games on your SNES Classic. If I can help you in any way, leave a comment, email me, or get me on my Twitter, and I'll do my best to help guide you through this if you're having trouble with it. So thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you next time. So if you guys want to get in touch with me outside of the YouTube comments, you can feel free to follow my Twitter, at Patent Place, or if you have any questions, uh, you can email me at my Gmail account, patentplaysgames at gmail.com. Thanks again for watching the video, and I'll see you guys next time.